is wonderful. Yeah. Amen. 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 Listen. I stand up here because of God this morning. Yeah. Amen. I suffer Thursday. A Lou Canar stroke, which means it's a deep stroke in your vein. Small clot that was in my brain. I didn't know what was going on on Thursday. I was standing up here praising the Lord. My whole body got hot. I got dizzy. I thought it was the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. I went and sat down. I called for Sister Crystal to come to heaven to the back. I knew something was right. She called 911. I, I didn't think I should go because I thought I was having an allergic reaction to something that I ate. But God gives you discernment. Yeah. Don't it? Yeah. He said, you don't know how to get, go to that hospital. I know you don't want to go, but go on. I didn't have any symptoms, y'all. Well, I didn't have any symptoms at first. I'm going to try to make this short because it's a long story to me. Uh, but I ended up having tingling on my left side, on my lip, tingling in my arm and in my fingers. But the church started playing while I was back there laying, waiting for the ambulance to come. The tingling started leaving, started leaving my body. And uh, I was still thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't go. Because, I, I mean, I don't feel like I'm, I don't feel like I'm feeling too bad. Look, they got me in the middle. Everybody now. <laughs> I wasn't feeling too bad. I didn't have a headache. I didn't have any pain. So don't be fooled. If you're not feeling right, go on to the doctor. Because, you know, they did the MRI with all the boom, boom, boom. Beep, 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 and all that, it was scaring me and all that, but I ended up finding out that I had a lunar stroke. And if anybody is familiar with a stroke, don't play with you, okay? And I'm standing here today because of God, and he is wonderful, amen! And that's my testimony this morning. Amen, amen. We thank God for you, nigga, because we definitely were praying for you, and we know that prayer. If you don't know, you will find out today. Amen. Hallelujah. The floor is now open. We don't want to miss anyone. We haven't seen a lot of people in a long time. So please feel free. But I'll bring you my mic so we can all hear it. The floor is open for testimony. Amen.
for waking me up this morning yeah. and allowing me to be here in Lewisburg, North Carolina. Yeah. My name is Debbie Toon. I'm from Yonkers, New York. Um, this is my family church. My grandmother was Ella, Ella Spivey Kearney, and my mom was Doris Arnetta Toon, Doris Arnetta Kearney, and um, from Yonkers, from Franklinton. So I'm so glad to be here this morning that I just needed to get up and say something. Amen. Amen. Please give me my sister and I travel mercies back home to New York tonight. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen.
28, but you don't have to look at a book this morning. Just look above my head as we sing our opening hymn, Just a Little Talk with Jesus. Amen. Shall we stand? Pray. 
as John also taught his disciples. Congregation. And with thy praise, thou shalt not be in the hypocrite's heart, but the love of the praise standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret. And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward openly. Congregation. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for the words of speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. Congregation. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Congregation. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Congregation. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power. For if we forgive men their trespasses, <coughs> your heavenly Father will also forgive you altogether. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his word. Mm -hmm.
same Lord Jesus the Christ, who is indeed the author and finisher of my faith, to this wonderful angel of this house.
I want to pause for a minute and let's clap our hands because he has been home for a long time.
at this time, if you would pause and quiet your hearts and minds and go with me back to 1878, where it all began. We pay homage to Reverend Linus Taylor, two deacons and 65 members that led the Living Church and later organized the New Living Missionary Baptist Church. At this time, service was held under a bush order. We thank God for their forethought and perseverance. We thank God for their many, for the many, many others that came after them. The journey of faith and fellowship spanning over 146 years has been a remarkable testimony to the power of community and belief. Through challenges and triumphs, this legacy continues to inspire and unite generations of individuals in a shared purpose. As we reflect on the past and look towards the future, let us remember the importance of coming together in times of joy and sorrow, of supporting one another through thick and thin, the bonds forged in faith and fellowship are enduring and invaluable, shaping our lives in ways we may not even realize. Now, as we reflect on the past with gratitude, we can look forward to the future with hope, joy, and love. Ashe and Amen. Thank you. Lives that the Lord decided 
take back with you. Amen. At this time, we will have our announcements by our class sister, <coughs> Crystal Jones.
And it's for anyone that would like to leave a token of love to Pastor Mason, to show him how much you care, to sow a seed, whatever your heart so desires. But that's what the red box on this table is for. Pastor Mason, if you have a card or any words of encouragement, you can enter it into that box. On Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday night, we were here to be revived. And revived we were. As Reverend Sidney E. Dunstan spoke to us about kingdom building and all of what it is that we need to do in order to do so. Our youth ministry started us off. The pastor's aid ministry took it from there. But the men's ministry You have to have been there. But if you miss it, just go on over to our social media pages, YouTube channel, Facebook, to see all that happened. As the Spider Sisters used to say, what a time, what a time, what a time. Immediately after service, the hospitality ministry would like to invite you to break bread and fellowship with one another in our fellowship hall as we continue to observe our annual homecoming. In missionary ministry news, please continue to bring your toiletries to be distributed to the homeless in this area. Hey, hey, hey! It's time to get back to the world. So don't forget Bible study will start on Wednesday, August the 7th at 7 p.m. Please join us by calling the conference call line at 978-990-5000 and the ID number is 438-367-HASHTAG. The youth choir will practice on Thursday, August the 8th at 6 p.m. Beginning this month, Sunday school will be on the second and fourth Sundays at 10 a.m. for the youth. Come early, breakfast will be provided for the youth. The NLMBC, New Liberty Missionary Baptist Church, Youth Ministry, End of Summer Gathering will take place on August the 10th from 1 to 5 p.m. at Adventure Island and Pizza Inn in Henderson, North Carolina. Please see Sister Margaret Mitchell for further instructions. The Franklin County Missionary Baptist Association 2024 Back to School event will be held in South Main Street Baptist Church on Saturday, August the 17th at 10 a.m. Deaconess Julia Alexander is offering a reward for the safe return of her blue netbook. So please see Deaconess Alexander if you have seen it or know its location. Now, as you are building yourself this week, please continue to pray for our sick and shut-in and bereaved families. Please pray for Deacon James Jones. And we're so happy to see Sister Deacon is calling Austin back with us today. And we are also so excited to see Deacon Curry with us today. Please take a moment to send them a card, a text, Send them a post or DM. Our thought of the week. If home is where the heart is, then may your home be blessed. Home is a shelter from storms. All sorts of storms. William J. Bend. Welcome home and thank you. <laughs> Happy to know your face is sure to show up. Happy to know 
Lord say amen. amen. Sister Bishop is certainly glad to see you as well. You can sit.
Deacon Catherine Oliva Merritt, Deacon Lewis Haywood Merritt, Brother Gregory H. Merritt, Brother Arthur Thaddeus McCowan, Brother James Oliva, and of course, Auntie, who expired, she expired nine months, 14 days ago, which her year anniversary will be the 21st of next month. And we're going to beg this to honor her. From her to, from us and her to the church and the principal of our fellowship hall, we donate $4,400. Deacon Braxton Young, on behalf of Sister Mary Young and her family, $500. Good morning, church. Good morning. Uh, first of all, give an honor to God, the patient and the members of the New Baptist Church. I'm glad when you said it to me. Oh, I'm thankful for each day I wake up because I've been blessed to see another day and I look forward to seeing another day. So in honor of Deacon Will Bolton Young, uh, okay. in honor of Deacon Will Bolton Young Senior and Deacon S. Junior Young Club, uh, the young family would like to make a donation. Out 
We want you all to contribute to the maintenance of our cemetery. Amen? Amen. We want every time you come home, you be able to go and visit your loved ones and visit them in a suitable way. Amen? Amen. But in order to do that, we need your assistance. Amen? Amen. It is always good to give to the building fund because we have a bill that needs to be paid. But it's also just as equally good to give to those things that are ongoing here at the church. Amen? Amen. And that cemetery is one of those. So I'm going to be standing here once after I get through preaching with a basket. And I want you all, as you pass by, to go to our lunch that has been provided for you to think of our church cemetery. Because some may say, I don't have nobody there. But if you're connected to this church, somebody in your family is in that cemetery. Amen? Amen. Before I push on, uh, the gentleman's family, I want y'all to stand one more time because I wanted to say this when you all stood up. They are the great grandchildren of Mrs. Lydia C. McKnight. Sunday school named in her honor. Amen? Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to have our sermonic selection. And I'm going to ask a good friend of mine and a deacon, Deacon James Kearney, if you will help me sing this song. I've been singing all day. Okay, you got to pay.
that you're happy because you have joy. Amen. Brothers and sisters, you'd be surprised that if you could interview every person in this room today, especially those who you have seen rejoicing, if you could interview them one by one, you would find out that just like those of you who are not shouting, there are a few people who are already happy. Amen. Because first of all, happiness is based on what is happening. Amen. If things are happening right in your life, you're happy. But, but how many people today find things are happening right in their life and look even, uh, let us look even at the simple definition of the word happiness. The first definition says good fortune. And then it says prosperity. But the third one really is it. It says a happiness is a state of well-being and contentment. Let the church say contentment. contentment. There are not many people, regardless of what their state is, that are contented. Praise the Lord. People are not happy with a lot of things. Amen. People are not happy with the state of this country. People are not happy with your health. People are not happy with their relationships. Particularly every single person that reaches a certain age, they feel that I would truly be sincerely happy when I get married. Then I would say you would need to talk to those of us that are married. <laughs> And perhaps they may tell you, I didn't know uh, I was happy when I was single. <laughs> How many know that everybody that put on charades and masquerades, they are not really happy? Amen. It's hard, New Liberty, to be happy when you've got bills stacked up high and all you can do is close your eyes and say, which one of these I'm going to be able to pay this month? It's hard to be happy when you, you, you work in a work environment and it looks like everybody else is just making and marking time and, and it seems like all of the work ends up on your desk. It's hard to be happy. Whenever the time you go to the doctor, if it ain't one problem, it's another problem. It's hard to be happy, but every time you tell on the, turn on the television, you see 45 doing this and, and 45 doing that. And now they said he was almost obsessed. <laughs> well, it is hard to be happy. But brothers and sisters, in, in the midst of unhappy situations, Paul is saying to the believer, rejoice, but my bills ain't paid. Rejoice, but I messed up in my relationship. We rejoice. Why should we rejoice? I found out that Paul's joy was centered in the fact that Jesus Christ is or was the Lord of his life. When you really just look at this book of Philippians, at the very begin, the very background of this book is interesting. Here is a man that was an apostle and an evangelist. He was on an evangelistic tour, and the Holy Ghost stopped him, stopped him in his tracks, and said, "No, you can't go where you are attempting to go." And while he was wondering in what direction the law would have him to go, Paul fell asleep. And at, in a night vision, there stood a man from Macedonia saying, come on over here into Macedonia and help us. Paul goes into Macedonia along with his party and he's looking for that man that appeared to him in a dream. But he does not find that man at all. He finds, however, a group of women down by a certain body of water. 
And every day they were going uh, through and going through and, and they were talking and teaching about God's word. And he began to open up the word of God and God began to open up the heart of the women, in particular a woman by the name of Lydia. Mm -hmm. And she said to him, you can stay with us. And as they walked daily from Lydia's house to the prayer meeting, there was a young girl, the Bible declared, who was possessed by the devil. A demon possessed girl. And when she saw Paul and his companions, she would say things like, these are the men of God that show us the way of salvation. And Paul would hear it day after day, week after week. And Paul heard what she was shouting every day. And it was not uh, uh, being said in a reverential tone, but it was said, uh, but it was a demon, the Bible said, that was inside of that girl. And that demon was, a was allowing her to attempt to taunt them. But one day, Paul got fed up. Paul got fed up with it. He looked at the girl and he commanded the devil to come out of her. And the Bible declared that at that very hour, the demonic spirit that had given her the ability to uh, tell fortunes came out of her. And as a result of that, as a result of this, the men who were making money off of this girl's demonic gifts yes. threw Paul and Silas yes. into a Philippian jail. Yes. Do they have any Bible readers today? Yes. They threw them in a Philippian jail, but before they threw them in a Philippian jail, they beat them. That's right. But the Bible says, at midnight. Ah, yes. oh, at midnight. Yes. I tell you, sometimes you can get into situations and wonder how in the world did I even get there? At midnight when everyone else was sound asleep. Yeah. At midnight when the wounds of the, on their backs after being beaten probably started to give them a certain amount of irritation. It was at midnight Paul looked over to Silas yeah. and said to Silas, come on, let's praise the Lord. Uh -huh. Let's praise God a while. And Paul started singing and Silas started praying, and after a while, they decided to sing a duet. And when they kept on singing, uh, they, they got to the chorus, and God joined in Amen. and made a duet into a trio. Amen. And the Bible declared that as they sung, the prison began to shake. The prison began to rock and reel, and everybody who was bound was loose. Uh -huh. Paul knew that God was with him in Philippi. And later on his writings, uh, these Philippians, he told those Philippians, he said, now I'm in jail. I'm incarcerated in Rome. And he starts thinking about in that prison, he said, uh, how did the church in Philippi, how they were always ready to minister to his needs. And he takes a pen and he began writing them a letter. Letting them know that while he was in prison, he still was rejoicing. All right. Amen. You, you, you read that first chapter, you'll find that he said, let me tell you what's happening in here. Since I've been incarcerated, the word of God is still going forth. Amen. And it's still going forth stronger now than ever before. Amen. All of the guards knew, know that I'm a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Paul says, now... Everybody's preaching. He said everybody's preaching. Some are sincere, some are not sincere. But he says to them, I, I really don't care whether they're sincere or not. All I know is that Christ is being teach. And, and in that, Paul says, I rejoice. Amen. Paul is so full of joy. He tells them, I don't know what you are going through, but you are to rejoice. Whatever you're going through, you have to learn how to express that the joy that, the, that you have in God. And when you express that the joy that you have is in God, you then will be able to understand that what you are going through is not the end of the world. Amen. Amen. 
Uh, you say you lost a job, but God said there's another one for you. You say you've been evicted from your house, God said you don't even get it again or I'll give you a better house. Amen. It doesn't matter what's going on. We need to recognize that as long as we have Jesus, you have something to rejoice about. And I'm almost done. He says in the 10th chapter of Matthew, in the 9th chapter of Luke, and the 3rd chapter of Mark, he sent out 12 and gave them power and told them to preach the gospel, to heal the sick, and to cast out devils. Then he saw that his time was running out on earth, so he called 70 more. He said, now I want you fellas to go and preach the gospel and to heal the sick. But such is the nature of doing the work of God that you are going to be confronted by Satan and his demons yes. whenever you do the work for God. Yes. The seven were not told to cast out devils. Jesus did not say a thing to them about casting out devils. But after they got out and they were doing their evangelistic work, they were confronted by the prince of darkness. Yes. But all, but, but they found out, Reverend Saul, that at the mention of the name of Jesus, yes. demons had to flee. Yes. And they got so filled that they came back and rejoiced. And they said to Jesus, Master, even the demons are subject unto thy name. Amen. Jesus said, and that's, that's no big thing. He said, I beheld Satan as a lightning falling from heaven. He said, don't rejoice because devils are being cast out. He said, Reverend, you ought to rejoice because I have given you something to rejoice about. He said, you ought to rejoice because your name is written in heaven. Yeah. I want you to know today that when it seems like life has dropped you to the bottom, when it seems like life has put you in a cellar beneath the basement, yeah. and the devil is trying to get you in a corner in a fetal position, yeah. don't you ever let him defeat you. Yeah. you don't you ever let him wrong you a little bit or not because of what's happening in your life. Whatever's going on in your life, remember who Jesus is. Yeah. Oh. 
those that are watching me on social media, there's some magic elements as well. Now we all been served to do today. If so, shall we stand together?